Now let's look at some historic examples. We're going to look at uh, the 20th century movement, so a little bit of the late 19th century, but really it was, this is bringing us into 20th century uh, distinctions. And we're going to talk about first uh, a man named Phineas Brzee. He was born in 1838 in New York in a family of farmers, He was a de which was a devout Methodist family. In 1857, following a call and confirmation, he preached his first sermon. He moved to Iowa, joined a Methodist class, and began preaching more regularly. He married in 1860. They had seven children. He moved to Los Angeles in 1883, so fairly early in Los Angeles' history. Uh, my my great-great-great-great-grandmother moved there in the 1870s, so my family has a little bit on Phineas Brzee there. Not has nothing to do with this topic, but just a little bit of me saying I have strong roots. In 18, he, he was very soon after he moved, he was appointed pastor of Fort Street Church, in the city, he was also appointed presiding elder for the district. This was, this was a growing city, uh, it, it not as certainly not as big as it later became, uh, either in uh, certainly not in uh, ultimate size, but also in relative to other cities. It was a, it was a pretty small city, but it was a, a growing, growing city, especially because the agriculture in the area was growing. He emphasized evangelism in his work and for the pastors in his district. So he said he really instituted this policy for active evangelism for his church, for the other Nazarene, for the other Methodist churches. He experienced then what he called entire sanctification while in Iowa, and he was drawn to the holiness movements, which began in emphasizing these. Even though it was frowned upon other Methodists, it was in the holiness movements that they made this statement of entire sanctification a lived, expressed reality. In early 1884, he sought relief from his district obligations to serve at what was called the Penial Mission, which served the poor and was a hub of holiness ministries in downtown Los Angeles. The district turned him down, but he went anyhow. And in rejecting the district's leadership, he forfeited his status as a Methodist preacher. In summer of 1884, oddly enough, the mission itself terminated his services to them, along with his colleague Joseph Whitney. They said, we don't want you here anymore. Though no reason was given, officially, most most think it was due to theological differences. The holiness leaders of the mission were Calvinist holiness, which we talked a little bit about that distinction earlier, while Brzee was Wesleyan holiness. So if you want to know if there's a distinction between Calvinist and Wesleyan theologies, even though they talk about shared things, and we have talked about a, a number of those, these small little nuances are not simply washed over, but can become very distinct differences in practical pastoral and theological ministry. In 1885, in October 1885, Brzee and Whitney started the First Church of the Nazarene in downtown Los Angeles. Oftentimes you hear a first church in the city and it's just the first church in the city. This is actually the first church of the Nazarene, what became the Nazarene denomination. The congregation was mainly made up of Methodists that Brzee has served in other churches, many of whom were prominent citizens in, in Los Angeles. The new church had two goals. They, they felt their goal was to minister to the poor of Los Angeles and to serve as a center for the holiness movement in the West. So you see this divergence between what does it mean to be have a holiness from the revivalistic approach that was being drawn from the Calvinistic side from the, in the 1800s to, uh, to the revivalistic uh, sanctifying approach to that was coming from the Wesleyan movements. There was a divergence. And so Brzee, who I think had tried to find a common ground, said, we're going to stake our claim in this. The name Nazarene was chosen to identify with Jesus's mission alongside the, the comment, what good can, from, can come from Nazareth? So the emphasis here is, is not a high look, you know, from above, isolated. It's we work for those who the world rejects, emphasizing a mission to outcasts and outsiders. They followed mostly Methodist discipline and polity, doctrine, worship behavior with some key changes. They limited clerical authority and expanded lay representation, which is a hallmark of other Wesleyan holy denominations like the Wesleyan Church and the Free Methodist. These holiness denominations had a strong fr frustration with, with how power could be secured by uh, ministers or in district leadership and cutting out the voice of those who were in 
the pews. And again, the emphasis in the Wesleyan movement is the work of the Holy Spirit that is in everyone. So thus the, the Spirit can speak and should have a voice coming from all directions. The Nazarene Church later united with other holiness groups from various kinds of backgrounds, thus blending their social action emphasis with other holiness approaches, especially those in the, in the uh, South and the Midwest tended to uh, be strongly emphasizing the, uh, the term legalism might be true, a little strong, but it reflects the more the behavioral aspects of holiness. While Brzee and, and the uh, Nazarenes in Los Angeles emphasize more the social action emphasis of holiness. And this is where we have uh, diverging streams as, as, and we, as we move into uh, our bigger discussion for this, this unit. The earliest name of the Nazarene denomination was the Pentecostal Church of the Nazarene, but this soon changed. Holiness churches in the late 1800s used the term Pentecostal in their names, signifying the emphasis on the Holy Spirit and the practices. It was Pentecostal because if you read the book of Acts, if you look at Pentecost, there was all sorts of things that were happening. The church, they began living together. They began living in a new way. The Spirit empowered in a holistic expression of ministry, both preaching, evangelism, and social action. They shared everything together. They gave their money to the poor and so on. But after 1906, that Acts 2 emphasis on Pentecost began became much more narrowly applied. Holiness churches took the label out of their names to avoid being associated with an upstart movement that took Pentecost and made it much more strongly focused on a specific expression of the Pentecostal experience. And now let's talk about that.